The purpose of this video is to walk you through the initial setup of the Teltonica cellular modems that we sell at ISP Supplies. Teltonica has a nice selection of modems that will enable you to create remote connectivity for machine-to-machine -machine networks, Internet of Things, or to supply backup connectivity to some other connection that you may have. The basic modems that we sell are found on the Teltonica brand section at ISP Supplies. And today we're going to be looking at the RUT240, but all the setup of Teltonica modems is basically the same. So I'm going to assume that you have already connected the modem to power. You've inserted a SIM card from the provider that you're going to be using for your cellular connectivity and that you've connected an Ethernet cable from the LAN port of the modem to your laptop. And you set your laptop to uh, obtain an IP address automatically. So assuming all of that is true, you should be able to web browse to 192.168.1.1. And you're going to log in with the default user of admin. And the password is admin01. And you'll click login. It's going to give you a warning that your connection is not private. Just continue on and load up the login page. The very first thing it's going to ask you is to change the password. So I will do that now. Once I click the save button, it's going to take me to the configuration wizard but I don't recommend that we walk through the wizard at this point in time. Instead, I want to see you upgrade the firmware to ensure that you have the latest firmware installed on the device. That will help solve a whole lot of problems or uh, prevent that from actually happening. So to do that, we're going to click System and we're going to go to the firmware link. So in order to get the latest firmware, you're going to web browse to wiki.teltonica.lt and that will give you the Teltonica wiki page. Now, a number of different search terms could be used in order to find the firmware. I just happen to know from previous experience that if you search for RUT2XX firmware and click the Enter key, it's going to take you to the firmware site. And from this point, you can download the latest version of the firmware. So I'll do that now. I'll click on this link, the latest firmware version, and I'll download that to my laptop. So I've already done that, so at this point in time I can upgrade my device. So back to the uh, web page here, the Teltonica firmware page, I'm going to click here and say upgrade from file. Click the button that says choose file. I'll pick the button and I'll click the upgrade button. Now at this point in time, it's going to upload the firmware to the device and then reboot it. So once that's completed, we'll resume. Now the device has uploaded the file. It's verified it. So the last step here is going to be to click the upgrade button. So I've completed the upgraded um, firmware. I have logged back into the device. Now we can finally go to the setup wizard and make the applicable settings to the device. On the first step, you can change the time zone to match your local time zone. In my case, that's going to be America and Chicago. And then click the Save button. Once we hit Save, it's going to take us to step two. I don't recommend setting anything here other than the APN. If you set the operator country, it will give you some different operator profiles, but depending upon the firmware you're running, your operator may or may not be there. It's really not necessary to do that. Instead, you're simply going to set the APN. Now, if you go to support.ispsupplies.com, there you will see if you search for Teltonica or APN, a list of APNs for different um, providers that we support. So we have them there for Verizon, AT&T, uh, those would be SIMs that you purchase directly from those providers. Also Global Gig, who is a reseller for AT&T, T-Mobile, and a number of others. So from that uh, link on the support website, you will find the APN you need for the provider SIM that you're using. 
In this case, I have a SIM that's uh, purchased directly from Verizon, and the Verizon APN is VZW Internet, all lowercase, with no spaces. So I type that in and I click the Save button. Step three is the LAN configuration. I'm not going to make any changes here. I like the IP subnet that it's using and so on. So I'll skip over to step four, which is Wi-Fi. On the Wi-Fi tab is where we're going to set up the um, encryption that we're going to use for our device. This will enable us to be able to uh, encrypt our data as well as restrict access to our device. So the type of encryption we're going to use is WPA2-PSK which stands for pre-shared key and I'll put a key into that blank if you want to see what you put of course you can click the little eyeball there and it will tell you. The other things you might want to set here would be the country code that will ensure the device operates within parameters that are applicable for your particular country and then everything else can pretty much be left at the defaults. You may also want to change the SSID, which is the name of the network that you're broadcasting. So once you've saved the things that you want there with the save button, the last step will be to go to step five, which is RMS. RMS is the remote monitoring solution that Teltonica provides. And if you'd like more information about RMS, the things that it can do for you. You can simply email support at ispsupplies.com or pick up the phone and talk to one of our sales engineers and they can walk you through how to get the RMS system license. And each device that you connect to the RMS system will need a license, but they're fairly inexpensive and they do give you the ability to remotely manage the device as well as to make configuration upgrades and changes. I'll do a separate video about RMS, but for our purposes today, I'm simply going to set RMS to enabled. So if my device had internet connectivity, when I click the connect button, it should show the connection state as enabled. Also required is a license be provided for this particular MAC address device on the RMS system which I have not done yet, so at this point it doesn't show me connected, but if you had done those things it would be connected at this point in time. You can click finish. So once you hit finish it's going to take you to this status page and in a moment here we should see whether or not the device has registered with our provider and that's found here in the mobile section and as you can see it is connected. It's been connected for six minutes. It's registered with Verizon uh, under 4G LTE and everything is in operation. So at this point in time, you can simply use the modem in this most basic configuration, or you can go in and make changes like set up failover, uh, add a license for the RMS system, and so on. So hopefully this has helped you out and you've gotten started, or at least are able to get started with your Teltonica modem and use it to its fullest extent.